So the session content, today we're going to ask the question, do MOC events affect documents? Then we're going to explore how SocketWorks MOC can process change orders by associating effective documents, associating reference documents, capturing data changes, and then capturing markups. All of this is going to be done where we're going to progress a change order from open to work in progress to issued for approval. And then in some cases, we have to circle back around to work in progress if things aren't approved. And then finally, we're going to progress through approved and closed. That would be the inherent change process for SocketWorks MOC. So let's get started. Let's get started with a question. Do MOC events affect drawings? This could be a complicated question, but we're going to render it down to yes or no. So it turns out that only 5% of MOCs do not affect drawings. That means that 95% of MOCs affect drawings. That's a huge number. All that means is we better have a change order process for our documents or drawings in place. So this is where SocketWorks kicks in. SocketWorks provides a change order process. Actually, there's four processes within it. One is to quarantine drawings. Another is capturing data changes, attaching files or reference files, and then capturing PDF markups. This webinar is going to focus on these four processes. Let me go ahead and finish this diagram. We're going to have to check out drawings or documents, and these documents are going to generally come from existing document management systems like Synergis, AutoCAD Vault, Blue Celio, or any of the other many document management systems out there. Once drawings are checked out, then we have to go ahead and start modifying them. So in the overall process, this is where the drafting or the CAD activity starts. All these work in progress activities lead to issuing a document for review. So we have to get that document out and with SocketWorks, that's generally published to a PDF and then made available to the stakeholders for approval, ultimately being approved. So if it doesn't get approved, then we're back to the drawing board. It's that simple. Let's take the case where it is approved to round out this diagram. And if it is approved, then we're going to return our document back to the document management system and finally notify the stakeholders that everything has been completed for that MOC and the drafting order associated with it. Well, I hope you agree this is quite the diagram. That's why we're going to pare this one down for this webinar. We're just going to focus on these aspects of it relative to what SocketWorks can do for you in this process. So let's get going and take a look at SocketWorks. So we're going to start out with the dashboard in SocketWorks. Dashboard shows all the change orders, which is a nice visual. Once I'm in SocketWorks and I land on the dashboard here, I see the record counts, but there's also another tab on the top for the MOC system. Here we can see all connections or toggle to a particular connection or database to see all of the MOCs or change orders that are currently taking place within our system. This is a good overview, but let's take a look at SocketWorks MOC. This is where I get a list of all the change orders and can go process them. So in the left-hand navigation, click on Management of Change. I already have another browser tab open, so I'm just going to click over to the other browser tab. Once in the Document Change Order screen, a good place to focus is up on the top in the control header where there are numerous predefined filters for all the different stages that the MOC process contains. Let me just focus on the open section for now so we can go to work. So the first step is to create a new change order. Up on the top in the control header is a plus sign and that is where we can add a new order. To add a new order we have to pick a connection, we have to set a priority, and then we can assign this change order to somebody. I'm going to pick on James Kelly and then we need an approver. I'm going to pick on George Montgomery. So moving on from the drop-downs, the next field that we have to enter into the system is the MOC number. This MOC number generally is not coming from SocketWorks, but it could. 
Same for the ECN number, the engineering change notice number. Also, it's very good to put in a description. This description is visible within the table for all of the change orders, so you can get a good sense of what a particular change order is all about. Next is the comments field. Comments are comments. If you enter comments, they're going to be visible under the information flyout. Just some more information to garner if you're doing a little bit of research on a particular change order. Okay, just two more fields to go, but actually one is all I'm going to put in right now, and that's the estimated hours. All right, let's go ahead and save this, and this is going to create our first change order. And there it is, top of the list. 2020-002. Now every record has a bunch of record controls. Here I'm going to click on the information button. This exposes the right-hand flyout. Here we have a number of other controls, including commenting. You can add a comment to exchange information about this particular change order. All the comments stay with the change order and are captured over time. So you can add a comment, your friends can add a comment. You want to come in here and add comments as needed to document the history on this change order. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to apply all these changes and then close the right-hand flyout. The next thing that I want to focus on are some of the procedures. The first procedure is associating primary documents. This is probably the most important step in the process. So we want to find the record control with the plus sign for selecting primary documents. Once you select or choose that button, then you're going to get a dialog box to attach drawings or documents to your MOC. I'm going to pray on PID 1200. After applying documents, we have reached a very important step in the process, and that is, can I move this MOC forward or not? The document orders have a progress button at the record control level to progress them from open to work in progress. Red buttons indicate they can't be progressed, and green means they can. So what controls the color of these buttons and the permission to move forward? Well, let's take a look. I have a green button here, so how do I make it red so I can't progress? Well, I'm going to go add another document, or in this case, a drawing. I'm going to go pick on PID 1300. I'm picking on 1300 because I know it is involved with another change order. If we look over to the right here, I see blocking issues. I have a, another change order that involves 1300. It is blocking me from moving forward. If I remove 1300, I'm going to see my button turn back to green, which allows me to move forward. None of the attached or associated primary documents are involved with another change order, so that allows me to go to work on them. All right, well, that's the end of the first procedure, associating primary documents. Let's move on to the second procedure, attaching reference files. With every change order, there seems to be reference files, whether they be markups or Word documents or descriptions. Sockerworks at the record control level provides the ability to upload auxiliary files. So I start the process by clicking on the select MOC file and then browse to a file. Here I have a PDF to upload. Once that's completed, just click on the upload button and this will attach the reference files to change orders. Well, that's it. That's all there is to attaching files to change orders. Let's move on to the next procedure, procedure number three, and that is associating markups to our change orders. Well, Socketworks has a PDF viewer. This becomes very powerful because it has the ability to do markups within that viewer. Let me go ahead and open up PID 1200 here in the viewer. Once it's open, I have the ability to apply markups to this document. On the right-hand side, there's a flyout, the right-hand flyout, and here is where we have some record controls on comments. And one of the record controls is applying a change order to each and every markup. So let's see how this process works. So first, I have to put a markup on. I'm already in markup mode, and I'm going to pray on this piping up here coming off this high-pressure separator. 
And the first thing I want to do is just put a revision cloud around all this instrumentation, which is the scope of the change order I'm working on. Well, there's just a little bit more involved here than a rev cloud can represent. So I'm going to go prey on the stamp library, and that's found in the control header. And I'm going to drop in the instrument bubbles that are appropriate for this change order and continue with my markup detailing. I'm going to use this same instrument stamp over and over again. I need to place that next to each bubble which has a I.O. requirement associated with it. So let me just complete this step. So this is going to be a bit boring as I place some more instrument bubbles on, but need to get it done, and I'm going to use the markup tool to put as much fidelity into my markup as I need to. So I'm going to change up my markup tool here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little arrow here to relocate this pressure transmitter to the piping. I'll put, use the text to make a note on the markup to that effect. And really just working to round out the markup to put as much information as possible graphically. So let me switch from graphics to text and communicate. To do that, I'm going to pick on my primary markup, in this case is my rev cloud extend the right hand fly out and go to work on the selected markup. It's all highlighted in orange here so I can start putting in a reference piece of text. So it's important to put in a value here that people can recognize and understand. Next, I'm going to go ahead and apply the change order to this. So if I drop down the MOC header control, I can see that my change order is in that list. I can select all of the markups in this case and apply that change order to all the markups. This way, they are all connected to the change order, which was the procedure objective. OK, well, I'm going to put a little bit more work into this by putting in some description for the CAD operator and others to see relative to this markup. Let me go ahead and just finish up this text, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, let's close our flyout and then continue on to the next procedure. But before we go to the next procedure, at this point, we have to go to step number two, and that is progressing our change order to work in progress. So let's get started with that. So my first step is to go back to the change order screen and then find my change order and then click on the record control to advance the status. Once that's clicked and confirmed, that record's going to move to the work in progress status. Therefore, to see it, I have to change my view. Once we select work in progress, there's our change order. It's bundled with all the other work in progress change orders. All right, now that we have our change order to the work in progress status, we can start associating changes to it and capture those changes. Let's take a look at how that works. So to get started, I'm going to navigate back to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, I'm going to pick on the record counts. This gives me a list of all the tables. I'm going to go prey on the instrument table this time. So I'm going to pick the instrument bar. And up comes all the data that is in my instrument tables. I'm going to immediately go into edit mode. And this is the primary feature. We have the MOC module on. And I have to pick a change order. Once I pick a change order and I click Select, SocketWorks is doing is just presenting the data that's associated with that change order. In this case, it's just presenting all of the data that's associated with PID 1200 because it is the only primary document that is in the change order. Let me change the record. I'm going to populate some values here. And what's important is this change event is going to be captured. I'm going to know what the data was before, what the data was after, when the change was made, and it's all going to be connected to the change order. So all we have left to do is click the Save button. If we close out of edit mode, we have now completed the process of editing data and associating it with the change order. All right, I'm not sure if you were counting or not, but we did get through all four procedures where we associated primary documents, we attached reference files, we captured data changes, we captured PDF markups.
These four processes represent the key components of SocketWorks MOC. So let's go look at the results. The results can be found on each change order. There's a Chevron at the record level, and if we expand that, we can see the primary documents. There's PID 1200. We can also see the data changes. This takes a second to load. Once loaded, we can see those three pieces of information that we modified. We can see the reference file that was uploaded, and that can be downloaded. And there are all the markups that we associated with this change order. There are the results. All of this information is all tied to our change order and can be used to process it. So once the CAD operator processes this document, in this case, we have to progress the change order to issued for approval. So let's take a look at this. This is the easy process. Once we have a change order and work in progress, we just simply click on the advanced status to advance it to the next. The next level is issued for approval. To see it, I have to click on the control header and now it's in the issued for approval section. The fourth step is approving and closing. Once approved, we just continue forward or we could go backwards. I'm gonna go ahead and go forwards here and click approved and then we progress the change order to the approved section. And finally, after the change order has been approved, we can advance it to the closed section. To do that, we click on the advance button once again and confirm and now that change order migrates or advances to the closed section. Here we see it in the closed section with all the other closed change orders that have been processed over time.